Welcome to The Countdown. This week, we've taken the show on the road, and I'm reporting to you post-turkey dinner live from my parents' house. Coming up in this episode, a super Jupiter, a monster quasar, and the moons of gas giants. Everything big! But first... Five! Everyone knows the sad tale of Pluto, the little demoted planet. But what about Pluto's neglected cousin, Maki Maki? Discovered in 2005, we didn't know much about this dwarf planet until 2011, when it literally grabbed the spotlight. In April of that year, Maki Maki passed in front of a background star, casting a shadow over the light in an event called an occultation. This gave astronomers the chance to estimate the dwarf planet's size and makeup. We now know that Maki Maki is slightly smaller than Pluto, and, because the dwarf planet cut off the starlight abruptly, researchers estimate that it doesn't have much of an atmosphere. A significant atmosphere would have given Maki Maki's shadow a fuzzy edge and dimmed the starlight more gradually. This doesn't mean the object has no atmosphere, there's methane on Maki Maki's surface, but it may be in localized clusters, which could grow or shrink as the dwarf planet moves around the sun. Four. If you had $500,000 to spend, what would you buy? A new house? An airplane? If billionaire SpaceX founder Elon Musk has his way, you'll soon be able to spend your 500 Gs on a ticket to Mars. Speaking in London last week, Musk laid out his plan for a huge Mars colony. He envisions a group of 10 pioneers traveling to the planet on a huge rocket powered by methane and liquid oxygen. They'll bring along equipment to produce fertilizer, fuel, and oxygen from the Martian atmosphere, and also materials to build transparent domes, which can be pressurized with CO2 to grow Earth crops. Musk says his end goal is to establish a Mars colony of about 80,000 people, and thinks the whole thing will cost about $36 billion, or about $500,000 per person. With that price tag, will Mars become the cool new hangout for Wall Streeters, dot-com billionaires and software engineers? Stay tuned! Three. Astronomers have discovered a giant gas planet, a planet so huge that it's 13 times the size of Jupiter. Spotted by the Subaru telescope, this planet's in a solar system about 170 light-years away from the Earth. Astronomers are calling the planet a Super Jupiter and saying that the gas giant's formation is similar to lower-mass exoplanets orbiting a new star. In this case, the super Jupiter orbits Kappa Andromedae, a star with two and a half times the mass of our Sun. Previously, scientists believed that such large stars couldn't give birth to planets, but in this case, they spotted similarities to our solar system, where planets are born out of protoplanetary disks circling the Sun. These are basically rotating disks of gas and dust, which later develop into planets. Now that scientists can put their doubts to rest, should we expect another discovery of a super... duper Jupiter? Two. A very large telescope has caught sight of a very large quasar. The object, known to its friends as SDSSJ1106 plus 1939, is five times more powerful than any quasar we've observed. In general, a quasar is pretty energetic. From its position, surrounding the black hole at the center of the galaxy, this galactic nucleus spews out electromagnetic radiation in the form of light and radio waves, but SDSS whatever is releasing way more energy than any other known quasar, about 2 million million times as much as our sun, and 100 times as much as our entire galaxy. Researchers discovered this quasar's power with observations from the Very Large Telescope, or VLT, in rave instruments located in Chile but belonging to the European Southern Observatory. One. The moons of gas giants like Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune have always baffled astronomers. The moons closest to the planet are small, but they increase in size as you get farther away. Scientists thought these moons were formed by disks of gas surrounding the planets, but they couldn't explain how a gas disk could create this odd distribution in moon sizes. Now French astronomers have found a possible model. They think Uranus and Neptune once had rings of space dust encircling them, just like the ones we see around Saturn today. As the rings moved outward, they began to condense into moonlets. If the rings had moved quickly, a lone moonlet would have grown larger and larger, into a full-grown moon, but the rings probably moved outward slowly, creating many moonlets which started to migrate away from each other. Later on, some of these moonlets slammed into each other, 
creating moons of various sizes and forming the pattern we see today. You can read more about this moon mashup in the November 30th issue of the journal Science. And that's your countdown. For links to all these stories and more, visit scientificamerican.com slash the countdown. The link's in the description below. You can also subscribe to the Space Lab channel or watch another video. For Scientific American, I'm Sophie Bushwick, shooting through space at 30,000 meters per second.